I just received a really serious accusation. Someone accused me of stealing the jokes that I used for these videos. Their words, not mine. Hey kids, Adam here. Today we're going to talk about mixed bus processing, what plugins I use on my master fader, and why. So, the mixed bus, that is also known as your master fader, or your final fader that everything goes into. So, all your tracks are sent to this. In Reaper, it's just the master fader all the way at the left. You can create another track and use it. I prefer to use the one built into Reaper and just use it that way. Now, over the years, there's been some debate and some controversy on how the word bus is spelled. Is it bus or is it bus? Because if you're talking about bus, it really can't be bus because bus means something other than what bus means. So if you're talking about bus as far as the recording bus, not the same as bus as far as the other bus, which isn't even really a word because that bus doesn't exist. So when you're talking about the mixed bus, always spell it bus and not bus. You got it? Great. Let's head over to Reaper and I'll. Show you what I'm talking about here. All right, here we are in Reaper. This is my band song, Under the Moonlight. Put a card up to it up here. You guys have heard this song a couple of videos before. This is a really good song to kind of uh, demonstrate what I'm doing on my Master Fader. Now, the Master Fader or Mix Bus, I'll probably call it both throughout this video. It's this thing all the way over on the bottom left here. It's your Master Fader. It's your final, all your channels go to that Master Fader. And that's where we put some plugins on for processing. Now, a lot of people don't believe in putting anything on the master fader because they feel that's for mastering and that mixing is a separate process. I don't really believe that. I mix through a number of plugins and uh, let me show you what I have, what I'm doing, and when I do it. All right, so here's my plugin chain for my master fader. What I will do when I first get my mix set up, I'll do all of the things that I'm doing. I'll do gain staging and I'll put cards up here for that. Um, we have a gain staging level one and a gain staging level two. I don't know if YouTube will let me put both cards up here for that. Uh, and then I do what I call the analog goodness. And uh, YouTube lets me put a card for that. I'll put that up there. Otherwise, I'll put these in links in the description. When I'm done with that, I'm ready to do a preliminary mix. I call it like the fader and pan mix, where I just go to the beginning of the song and I play it and I start moving faders around and I'm moving pan along. I don't use any effects at this point. I could just get everything. I, 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 Bass balance. I want to get the drums volume sounding where they are. I want to get the bass and guitars and everything. Sometimes I'll skip vocals, but for this part, I really kind of want everything in there. And I'll get a, just a bass setup. I won't do any automation. Won't do any of that. Won't split out tracks here and there. I'll just get get a bass foundation. All right. So then the first thing I'll do is I'll add a mix bus compressor onto my master channel. Now I use the SSL. Um, I, up until this mix, I've used the SSL by Waves, and uh, SSL Native was having a sale last year on their native bus compressor and SSL channel. Uh, I got a good deal on it, so I decided to pick it up. They sound a lot better than the Waves. Uh, they're not as easy to use, just a couple of weird things here and there, but overall they sound a lot better. So what I do here is I take the attack and put it at 30, put the release at either 0.1 or I'll put it at auto. It all depends on how it reacts in the song. You'll have to play around with it and see what it, what it sounds like to you. Ratio, we don't want to kill this thing, so we want a two to one ratio. Makeup gain, here's a little tip for you. If you turn this all the way down, you don't have to worry about your master fader clipping as much uh, when you have all your faders going. And I can leave my faders closer to unity than I normally would if I had this just kind of compensating. Now this will reduce the overall volume, but that's okay because we're gonna be pumping a lot into the master fader. And then I'll take the threshold and I'll put it to where I'm getting two to three dB of gain reduction. So what you wanna do this in the loudest part of the song where you have the most things going on. I'll play it for you and show what it looks like. So you can see it's anywhere between two and three, almost getting up to four dB here and there. The louder things are gonna be like your snare and your kicks. Uh, and then when the vocals come in over the top, that kind of just brings you know everything, all the levels up. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure that as you mix, especially when you're adding things that add volume, you wanna make sure you go back here 
and adjust the threshold to make sure you're still sticking at that two to three dB of gain reduction. And I leave this on all the time. I want to mix through this. This is kind of like uh, mix glue or glue compression or uh, gluing your mix bus. There's a lot of different terms out there that have to do with the word glue because it kind of just brings everything together, makes everything more cohesive. When you mix through this, you're not really affecting the overall compression level because you're using such a low ratio and such a low amount of compression, but you're getting everything to just fit in a little, a little bit, add a little bit more energy, making, you know, taming peaks a little bit more. Next thing we do is I want to do a little bit of EQ. I want to bring out some of the lows, some of the highs, and cut some of those like boxy sounding mids. I do that in two plugins. First, I do the uh, the pull tech um, or Puig tech as Waves calls it. I'll do the bass trick um, where I take the boost and the attenuation at, and I'm doing the 30 dB here, at two on both. And then I add a boost of 12K, and this is just at uh, three uh, dB of that. Uh, just adding this in, I'll turn it off and on. And then the second EQ I use is I use really any normal EQ. Uh, Re-EQ uh, works just fine. I was using this REEQ for a while. Uh, I'm kind of getting away from this just because I've, I've run into a couple bugs on it. But what I do here is I usually do a high pass filter somewhere between 15 and 20 hertz, depending on the sound. Uh, this, or the song I should say, this one I have a kick drum that I really want to kind of echo through and a little bit of rumble. So I turn it down to 15. It really doesn't matter. The human ear can't hear here much below 20 anyway. Uh, I do a little bit of bump for the bass, and this is anywhere between 50 and 100 hertz, really, uh, kind of targeting the 60 area here. I do another boost at 8.5K, and this is just a shelf boost. And these are very, very small moves. This one's 2 dB. Uh, both of them are 2 dB there. And then I do a cut around 300. Here I've had a 294. I'll sweep around between 250 and 350. And I want 3 dB out of that because that 300 hertz range, very boxy, very unwelcoming, not a very good sound. So I'll play this on and off. It's very subtle. It doesn't do a whole lot. It brings just a little bit more bass out. It cuts a little bit more boxing. And it brings just a little bit more top end out of there. After that, we hit it with saturation. And what better plug-in to use than the Kramer Master Tape? Because that's what it's called. It's the Master Tape. And here there is a preset called Mastering Clean and Open that I like to use. I will turn the wow and flutter and noise off, set the record level so it hits about zero on the VU meter, and bring the playback level down to match. So before and after this. And that kind of just brings in a little bit more glue rounds off some of the harsher transients uh, without killing the dynamics of them. So I really like this. I You've seen me use this on all sorts of stuff. In fact, I think I'm gonna do a video on like my top five plugins. You can guarantee this will be in there. The last real plugin I use to affect the sound is Greg Wells Mix Centric. It's a very, very easy plugin. There's a one giant knob called Intensity and it adds, reading kind of through the manual, adds harmonics, it adds EQ, and it adds slight compression to your mix. I started mixing with this probably the second or third song on this album, and I liked it so much I kept it on. Uh, what I'll do here is I'll play it with, uh, start out with it off, I'll turn it on, I'll turn it off again and watch how the mix just kind of falls apart. So 
it really opens the mix up. It just, it's like this magical one knob, magical fairy dust plug. And they actually named it wrong. It should be called fairy dust, magical one knob, fairy, magical pixie, fairy dust, something like that. So for settings on this one, as you start around nine o'clock or so on the dial, and I'll never, ever, ever go past noon because you can really cook a mix with this thing. Uh, in fact, normally I leave it at this setting right here and I'll just copy and paste this from project to project. I do bump up the input a little bit just by like one dB, just to push a little bit. And then I this uh, plugin tends to make things a little bit louder. So I'll pull this down so the input and output match. You have nice meters that, that work here. So the only other two plugins I have, I'll go in reverse order here. I have a view meter. I either have the waves or the MV meter, which I featured in uh, this video up here. Uh, it's a free plugin, it works great. And then I have the ultra maximizer, which is the limiter. And all I use this for is when I'm working on mixes and we're doing feedback with the band, I just throw this on to boost up the volume so they can compare it to other things without having to go through the whole mastering chain and without them having to crank it up and then try to compare it to something that's a complete different volume. So that's all I have on my master fader. Let me play you some of these, uh, turning them off and on. Now what's gonna happen is because I have the makeup gain on the SSL compressor all the way down, the volume with these off is gonna be a lot louder. So in post, I'll just volume match the two so there's really not much of a volume difference. You can just hear the tonal difference and the things that it's doing. So we'll start with everything off and I'll turn them on and we'll go back and forth. So that's it, that's mixed bus processing. Everything you need on your songs, you can add all sorts of different plugins to achieve the same sort of thing. There are a number of different compressors you can use. You can definitely, absolutely 100% use RIA EQ built on the Reaper. There's a number of different uh, tape saturation plugins. The Chow Tape is a free one. And I'll do a video on that somewhere down the road here, probably later this summer. And uh, or you can use any of the plugin pr uh, packages that you have really work really well on this. So if you like this video, please leave me a comment. Let me know how I'm doing. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell thingamajigger. And uh, don't forget about the Reaper unofficial Reaper users group discord. Link to that below. Until next time, have an awesome week. recording out to or I shouldn't even say that because I don't know if that's even true. Hey kids, Adam here. Today we're going to talk about mixed breast, mixed breast, mixed breast processing. Uh, the other thing you want to worry about is what is the other thing you want to worry about?